Hello and welcome back guys, I'm Halifax and uh, in this episode we are starting the advanced part of the video documentation and we are going to talk about how we are going to fix shaders how we are going to use the real-time shader compiler selecting a shader from where we want to start navigating to the shaders selecting between a vertex and a pixel or fragment shader how we recompile the shader and some other features that I'm going to show about how the uh, compiler remembers the last modified source and as an extra I'm going to show you how uh, we can add a custom conversions to the UI and how uh, we can add automatic convergence based on the scene position from the camera so if you remember last time we used broken age I'm opening the configuration file here we added a couple of uh, shaders which basically these shaders are being loaded and swapped with the real ones those shaders can be found in the shaders folder and if we look in them inside them we will see that maybe this wasn't the best choice we will see that, for example, this one at the moment there is no stereoscopy inserted into them so let's say we want to add stereoscopy to this shaders pack which again will broke the stereoscopic 2D so with custom convergence we will lose the UI as you remember Um, but before that, before that, we'll keep it as it is, and I'm going to show, I'm going back to, I'll close this one, to the configuration file, and we need this option set as enabled, the shader compiler options. Now, these two options are only for the shader pair functionality, are used only in the shader, in the shader pair functionality, but this one, is actually used in the shader compiler and is the index from where you will start navigating with the shader compiler so <clears throat> in the debug shaders we see that we have shaders starting from 3 all the way to 54 so let's say we want to start at shader 26 we'll go here and we are going to save shader 26 and then we are going to start the game like you remember we can see some part of the game in 2D and the other part of the game like the menus are 2D because we are swapping the shaders so now we go back in game we still have the alternative convergence from the last video if we hit escape you can see that uh, the menus and all the UI is basically 2D and now to enable the shader compiler or to see the actual shader compiler we need to press F8 so that's F8 and this message box appears where it says shader information the selected shader program is number 26 exactly the one from where we want it to start the current shader source file is that one if you want to swap to the vertex shader you need to press F8 again if you want to compile the shader you need to press F9 so we keep that window open and we are going back to the games folder and in debug shaders folder it says here that the current shader source file has been dumped in debug shaders current shader source all the way to the bottom you'll find it now this is why I recommend you are using notepad++ and not notepad the regular notepad so we'll open it and we get this one which we can see it so here I can say 
this is actually a fragment shader. Now that's weird. Because it should be... Ah, yes. Like it's saying here, the fragment shader is this one. So you can see, fragment. If I press F8 again, it's swapping to the vertex shader. Vertex shader ID, 24. So if I click back, back in Notepad++, it will automatically detect that the source code has been changed, so I and it wants to reload. I say yes, and now we get the content of this actual shader, number twenty six. Now in found shaders, if you remember, twenty six is responsible for the other text, or basically, oops, this text that you can see there. So if we are coming here and we say that your position plus y, we add 0 0.25 to it. And now we press F9. It doesn't matter in which window you're, at, you're uh, focusing. F9. We get a shader compiled successfully. And as you can see, the text moved. You can't actually see exactly where it is, but I believe it's somewhere up. So maybe let's put it as minus and compile. Now it doesn't want. So let's try to add 50. You also need to save the file in order uh, to recompile the source code. So, F9. No, I still can't see it. Uh, ah, yes, here it is. As you can see it uh, very vaguely, it's exactly down here where I'm pointing with the cursor. So, let's try to say if I remove 0 from the current position. See, it's still there. No, it's back. Because, uh, yeah, so if I remove 0, zero 1, uh, get shader compiled. See, it's actually moving. So zero, zero, 003, it will move even lower. Zero, zero, 004. Compiled it again, compiler was okay, it's even lower. So basically, this is how you can modify in real time any shader. As you can see, you just modify it, so 002, we, you, we save this file, we press F9, and we get the shader compiler message saying that it was okay. And once you hit OK, you can actually see it being applied in the game. <coughs> so basically, this is how you are modifying any shader that you want. But this is only for program 26. So this is exactly the program that we set here. So we also found another shader. Let's see. Number three is responsible for some UI parts, like the bars that we see in the main menu. So if I say save and exit, main menu are these bars. As you can see, the hello now is not properly being applied. So let's see we want to modify shader number 3. Now one way is to basically go here and say 3 and restart the game or you can navigate forward and backward backwards through the shaders by pressing control and minus. It's backwards, control plus is forward. So if I hit control plus I don't want to reload it. Well, yes, I want to reload it. Control plus. Now we have 28. Now the reason here doesn't uh, appear anything is because shader 27 doesn't exist. 
26 plus nothing plus 28 sorry so if I go I keep pressing down until I get to number 3 we have vertex ID 1 from program 3 yes reload and this is exactly the one that we are loading from here see it's exactly the same shader exactly the same shader so here if I say gl position dot i plus my or yeah, let's say plus plus equals plus equals so plus equals I'm going to show you zero point one so plus equals actually means or let's say it like this this operation that I'm writing there is equivalent with this one equals gl position point y plus so it's basically adding to the variable on the left so instead of writing this one it's easier just to say plus equals and now we save it and we recompile and you can see the bars moved up if I put a minus it's actually selecting how big they are in this case as you can see or how thin or the position or yeah it's actually the position see So if I put 005 and it compile, we get something like this. So we continue again. As you can see, this one is still being remembered, the font position. So if I want to see exactly, I remember I modified shader 26, but I don't remember what modifications I made, for example. And I want to see the modified source code again. I just go forward until I reach number 26 again 26 I reload and as you can see is the modified shader source so this is my modified shader and now if I go back to number 3 and we reload the source can actually see that this is the shade that is currently being applied and this is the modification that, that I've added. These are the features, these two points that I wanted to show you. How does the shader compile remain, remembers the last source use? New compiled shader generates a separate file. So every time you compile the shader, each individual shader if you go to debug shaders you'll also get a modified vertex file which actually contains in this case this one but it also generates one for number 26 so the uh, wrapper automatically dumps the last modification that you applied on the shader the reason I, I generate a different file is that you can easily open this one open this one so that one and that one and then you can go uh, plugins compare compare and you can see exactly what the difference is between the original one and the one that you actually manually modified so this is very handy very very handy um, all right so number 26 is the one that we up modified again this is the vertex vertex shader ID and if you want 
the fragment to press F F8 and now get the fragment which if I go back to number 3 I want to show you number 3 yes which is this one so we are not going to apply that one we compiled so we get the bar back we go back or forwards to 20 6 again Up. this is the vertex plus 8 we select the fragment and now I want to say that GL frag color is vec4 of 1 this is the red color the blue uh, the green color sorry the blue color and the alpha if I do it like this and I compile I should get something like that as you can see because we set the alpha color always as a zero we get this now if we put it at zero we will probably not get anything so 0 0.5 we want half of the alpha color so now if for example we want this one to make it red and keep the original alpha color so you can actually see the letters we can probably do something now this is one way of doing it you can do it in multiple ways you can say that x y and z equals 1.0 so, so actually this will make it white so i say x only x which is actually the red color and y z which is green and blue we want as uh, zero and we don't get anything now that is very weird because we should get uh, uh -huh. yeah well i think we kind of screwed up the alpha color here because now if I do it like this, see, we still don't, oh, sorry, if I do it like this, we still don't get the original color back. That's because <coughs> this color is being saved probably in a texture, so the moment we modified it, that um, change propagated, basically, and over, was over, uh, written over the original value so in some cases like i told you in a, uh, a video before modifying something in one shader can completely break everything afterwards because that modification is uh, then later afterwards found in all the shaders or in all the code even if you revert to the original value so yeah keep that in mind like we can see it here so yes like we can see it here and of course now if we go back we have a modify vertex and a modify fragment the modify fragment the modif uh, the modify fragment and the modify vertex um, like I showed you in a video before if you make a mistake here any type of mistake it will say shader compile failed and it will give you all the information so this is actually the output or the content of the shader and it will say line number 12 syntax error unexpected something expecting that or that at token that now line 12 is exactly this one so it says that here something is wrong uh, it's expecting either uh, colon semicolon at this token which normally the error gets is triggered here because something before it before this position is actually not right and these are just comments so if we remove them and we look go back 
we actually see a, see that there we are missing the semicolon. So now if oh, now if you come yeah, and the moment you've screwed things up, it's uh, dead. So yeah, basically the game crashed because it couldn't uh, use the shader again. Um, now, for example, because it crashed, we have two things that we can do. Uh, if we load it again, and we go again, and we press F8. This is the fragment on 26, and we press F8, we select the vertex. Uh, or was it the fragment? Anyway, it doesn't really matter, we reload it. We see, see the original value, or the original code. So if you want to use the last one, you can basically go and this is 26 and you find 26 and this is I closed that window which I shouldn't have so this is the fragment the fragment so the fragment and I closed it again <laughs> we select 26 fragment we open it we can copy paste copy paste and now I can show you this little thing uh, which that one got compiled in the back and you see we made the text red because we are just modifying the red color while uh, the red color the blue color and the green color while we keep the original alpha now this is also valid like RGB see because you know it's a color so you have XYZ or RGB so if you want it green, we can say that R and blue are zero, and green is one, and we get something like that, which is actually the previous one, which was red, with a green, and gives you a yellowish. So yeah, as you can see in all the uh, all the text now is yellow. <laughs> There's something to remember if you want to. These are just simple examples to show you how the shader uh, compiler is actually working. So, uh, yeah. Con F8 toggles between or changes between fragment and shader. Then uh, vertex, sorry. Control plus selects the next available shader. If you press once and you don't see anything, that shader doesn't exist. If you press again, you'll see that. 30 exists, 31 doesn't, and so on. When you reach the end, and you keep on pressing, nothing appears. So, you should know that there are no shaders after. And the same if you go minus, or go minus, until the last one, which the last one is actually a shader uh, 1, or 0, 1. So, you can't, you don't have shaders with negative IDs <laughs> so yeah this is how you can select every time the shade uh, the the um, source code gets dumped in this file current shaders shader source that GLSL in the debug shaders folder uh, every time you compile uh, say uh, file is generated so compile it this was pro uh, program 11 vertex compile it when you go inside here you look vertex modify vertex it's exactly this one so you always um, have the last modified source code for a shader if you want now if you want to add this shader as an exception you like I showed you in the other video you can just select this one put it in the shaders folder then you can go to this part and you add it here and the next time you are loading the game shader 11 will be actually created from these files rather than the original uh, code of uh, the shader that exists in the game so <clears throat> yeah i show you how we can recompile i showed you how you can select between a vertex and a fragment how we can select a shader between toggling between vertex and uh, pixel uh, how we can use the real-time shader compiler and how it's actually working so now i want to show you the extras 
So we'll use broken edge because it has a couple of shaders. So it's not very hard. I'll just yeah I can I, I can keep that one. So um, in this case I already know how I'm going to modify it I'm, uh, and I'm going to explain it. I have here two codes which I want you to show. Now this the second one is actually the automatic convergence. I'm going to run a little bit through this code. So this says that if the W component of the position, like I told you, the W component is actually the depth, but is not Z. So W is not equivalent to Z. I explained a little bit uh, about this component in the previous video. So if the current position of an object of or a vertex of an object is less than the current value of the convergence multiplied by uh, 0 0.7 which is multiplying by 0. Point something you actually are dividing this value so you get a uh, smaller value I hope you know that <laughs> so yeah if the gel position is actually smaller than this value apply this position otherwise you apply this position so if you look this is the standard stereoscopy string. This is the standard stereoscopy string while where the convergence is actually 0 0.3. So it's one quarter or 33% of the original value. So this one we are going to apply. This, this thing we are going to apply in the wrapper as the stereo string. Now slash n for the for those of you who don't know slash n is actually when uh, the program finds slash n in a string it's actually an enter so it goes on the next line that's what slash, it, uh, slash n is. If I copy this one on one line or like yeah on one line and here I put a slash n and here I put a slash n and I copy this one Oops. exactly here and I save, save this file and I launch the game again this will fix I'm go uh, yeah, I'm going to show you in, in a second. Uh, maybe I should have done it a little bit different to see exactly what I mean. Because here you can't see it exactly. I need a scene where you can actually see it. So let's keep the original one. I'm going exactly to show you what I mean with automatic convergence. So I'm loading the game again. I'm going to hit continue. I'm going to select the other character. Oops. Oh, see? For example, here, that's how it looks. So, it doesn't look very good, right? Uh, I'll go here because I want to show you exactly a, a good uh, place and a realistic scenario so I'll go here I say I'm here so I'm adjusting the convergence something like this yeah so I'm saving this setting and now if I go to the, the window you can see the how uh, big the convergence and the separation actually is so now if I apply the other string with the automatic convergence and if I go here you can already see from the main logo lo lo logo that uh, the convergence is so here we see the same thing if I go here you can actually see it how the convergence is automatically being applied the new one 
Now, if I go back, you get the previous or the normal convergence. If I go again, you see the alternative one. So this is automatic convergence based on the position of the uh, of the scene. Now, this calculation here, the one that I've uh, showed you, this one, it's actually a very simple one. So you can do much more complicated stuff with this feature. You can calculate many more points. You can make it automatic or dynamic, so you, you know exactly, rather than applying a, a, a fixed value, you can uh, calculate that value and apply a dynamic one, a real dynamic one, I mean. So yeah, here I'm applying a static one based on the convergence, so yeah. The second one, second one, it's actually the one that we are going to use in all the other shaders. So my fixed shaders, sorry, my shaders that I'm swapping are 3, 6, 6, 3, 6, 20, 20, 10, 26. So, F8. eight. I'm already on 26. If I reload this one, I can say here, apply this one. I also need, I also need, so let's go to the next one, uh, oops, let's, oh, sorry, let's go to the next one, 29, uh, in 29, yes, to take these uniforms basically, Twenty six again, vertex. So yes. In this one I'll just apply my uniforms. I told you what uniforms are in a previous video. And I'll select this one. Oops. And I'll apply it here. And I'll I'll press F9. And oh so many. And now, you can actually see the text for both eyes. Now, what's interesting is the convergence changes based on the convergence of the game, as you can see. See? But it changes to acceptable values with the game's convergence. Previously, at this convergence, if we just add the normal convergence or the normal stereo string, the menus will actually be somewhere around here and somewhere around here outside, so you can't see them. So, yeah, by adding actually a smaller convergence value or a percentage of the original one, you can actually see how, uh, uh, how this behaves. So, if I put here 500 and I recompile it, Oops, it's actually here. You can see immediately how resume is here and in the other screen you can't actually see the resume. You see save and exit. So 2000 is something. Like this. Let's keep it there. Uh, yeah, 2000 and uh, while 5000 is actually something like this, see? And back into DC, it's actually even bigger now. So th these values, you need to try them. See? You can't actually, I can't tell you some magic numbers. Uh, these numbers are calculated on the game, so you basically try and error. You try and see if, it, if, uh, if, you, if it's working or not. So now, <clears throat> I'm going to do the same thing for all the shaders. So, 23 was the, 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 I don't want to. I just want, I'll just make a new file in which I'll save this and this, so I can easily copy paste them. Uh, no, I don't want to save that one, so 
F8, F8. So I reload it again. Yes. So I get this one. Current shader. I'll add it there. I'll add this one. I'll add it here. I save. I compile. That was tw uh, 23. The next one was, if I remember correctly, 20. Yes. I compile, yes, 26 and 3. No. So, 6, Ah, that's just. Oh, that's an error on number six. So it will crash now. I need to see exactly why that happened. Probably I didn't write something correctly. Or something, he didn't like it. But uh, yeah, we now, because I already tried to compile it, I should have it. So. Actually, if I just say number six again, no, because it's the same one. Yeah, see, it was something that we didn't like something in uh, an extra space or something. And uh, three, um, Yeah, that one. We add this ones. Compile it. And now, as you might see, everything is in 3D. So everything is in 3D. Oh, that one is not. Oh, right. I know why. <laughs> Don't worry about that one. So now that we, because it crashed, so that's why. So that was number twenty, I guess. Yeah, number twenty. So if I go back here, I have number twenty, which I already have the modified vertex. So I can just copy it, paste it. Compile it, 20, 23, which I can get it from here, the modified one. Twenty-three and twenty-six, which I already have it here. Yes. This one. And now I should have all the shaders in modified as you can see. So everything now is in 3D, the HUD and uh, the menu should also be in 3D. But I think number three. Oh, it is number three. Uh, maybe I did something. Number five. That's interesting. Yeah, see this one, you know, for example, has that one. So now that we have everything, what we can do, what we can really do is, I'm just going to open it again. Uh, I can select oh, my vertex. This is the third one. So I can select this one. Uh, 
and I'll paste it here. So basically now I, I take the last shaders that I modified and I dump them in the ones that I'm going to, that are being loaded at uh, runtime. This is number six. So number six, modified vertex. Modified vertex. Number 20, number 20, modified vertex. Number 23, modified vertex. 23, uh, 26, modify vertex, Oop. and that's it. So now, if I start the game again, you get, you get the game perfectly in 3D. Everything is in 3D now. The menus, except this one for some reason, I need to see. The halos, you can't, can't see the halos there, everything is working, the, everything is uh, lining up. This picture is lining up, see? Uh, continue, the menus are in 3D, the bars are in 3D, uh, it features the automatic convergence, the text is in 3D, everything is in 3D. A different convergence for the UI and the uh, other parts uh, and different convergence for the actual game. The toggle is there, as you can see, it's changing, it's affecting everything, while previously it was in, uh, affecting only the shaders with stereoscopy. Now because we have uh, stereoscopy in, uh, even in the UI, it's also affecting it based on those rules. So this is how the shader works, the shader compiler works, how you can load sources um, and you can modify a shader at runtime, how you can cycle through shaders, how the shaders are being remembered and applied, how the last shader or the last source code that was manually applied to a shader is saved in a different file so you have it afterwards and you can use it and so on and so on and so on. So with this video, <coughs> I'm almost finished with the functionality of the wrapper. I uh, want to, in the next video, I'll talk a little bit about frame per second injection or uh, lock removal. Now, I will not get into this video, uh, and I'm not going to start about that feature in this video. I'm going to talk about it in the next video. So because this video got pretty long anyway. <laughs> so I really hope you got an understanding of how the shader uh, compiler works and how you can use it. And I really hope you saw the power be behind it and how powerful it is. And now, if you know how you can modify shaders in uh, OpenGL, you can do awesome and a lot of advanced stuff. This tutorial wasn't about how you can manually modify or I'm not going to teach you how GLSL works. That's up to you guys to figure it out or learn it. So, until next video, cheerios!